Hey everyone, welcome back to the weekly AI Roundup. This week has been packed with groundbreaking developments and thoughtful debates for the future of AI from enterprise, transformation to next-gen developer tools, and some cautionary tales about unchecked growth and what that what might mean. Let's start with enterprise transformation and agent-driven workflows. I started off with some major enterprise focus sessions, listening to Gemini at Work, which was a new release for Gemini Enterprise. They provided an agent SDK, um, and what else did they do? Improved. Um, they had a lot of demos um, about how to use it in retail, how to use it in marketing, how to use their video generation along with their content. But I'll read what the summary is. Showcase how Gemini Enterprise is revolutionizing sectors like healthcare, legal, and retail behind a powerful full stack AI platform. The live demos illustrated how intuitive interfaces like the Gemini CLI and pre built agents are making it easier to deploy complex workflows at scale. Similarly, OpenAI's deep dive into its own internal workflows demonstrated how a go-to-market assistant and a HR onboarding tool can save teams hours weekly. So OpenAI had a HR tool where you can ask questions about policies and procedures, get information about rebates they did if they had to travel interstate, that another HR platform where they could then find staff in the organization who would help them with certain tasks. They said apparently it's saving lots of time. So they get the best people to plan out their processes and flows and inform the agents with what sort of features or functionality they need in the platforms. It's fascinating to see how real world enterprise challenges like handling support tickets and streamlining customer engagements are being solved with agent driven automation. And then there's the extensive look into executive insight where over a thousand leaders talked about their AI readiness detailing how internal support bots and early wins are setting the stage for a future where AI becomes an indispensable business partner. What really stands out is the focus on not just the technology, but on tangible ROI in the enterprise settings. It's also like everything is about context. And one of the podcasters said next year is the year of context and context engineering is what we've been focusing on. And the real importance is all about context engineering. And that's what we've been doing this year with all of our products and projects and clients that we're working with, it's how to get the right context to the agent and the model so you can get the best outcome. It's not just the prompt, it's the information that goes along with it. Shifting gears to developer focus innovation and redefining how we code and build, Sam Altman's discussions at Dev Day on the OpenAI Dev Day emphasized how the world of AI development is undergoing a rapid transformation. New Agent builders, which we talked about last week, low code solutions, and even Sora 2, the new video editor, which needs to be king. I think people prefer that to VO3. I haven't done a side-by-side -side or tested Sora 2 yet, but I'm seeing a lot of Sora content on social media, and a lot of it is pretty crap. <laughs> a lot of like fake wrestling matches with the Queen and Steve Irwin and all these other dead people. I saw one yesterday where Einstein hit the Queen over the head with a chair in a WWE ring, like just ridiculous things. One of the most exciting things I caught from the transformation of the upgrade to Cursor, it's got a new agent development ecosystem which features plan mode, integrated browser control and smart command interfaces to change how we interact with things. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works with the Claude CLI or Cursor CLI. So I'm going to have to, sorry, not Cursor CLI, they're Cursor agents and understand how that works because I use Cursor a bit as well as Codex, Claude Code, Gemini. I test everything to see what works and what doesn't. Next gen AI infrastructure and scaling concerns. Not all the news is about opportunity. Some of it raises important questions about the future. For instance, an AI lab founder expressed deep concerns about reinforcement learning, misalignments and reward hacking. Um, that's all about how agents can just, they get given a reward for achieving a goal and then they just try to maximize that reward. They don't take into context the greater outcome of what they should be doing or play within the rules that we understand to have. So that's something that has to be chained properly because then it could just be like a runaway thing with the agent is just doing that at infinitum because that's what it's been instructed to do because that's what the reward system is set up as. Meanwhile, NVIDIA's put $500 billion of investments to build dedicated AI factories. They're not calling them data centers anymore. The AI factories because this isn't about sharing resources and servers. This is about a or effectively a factory which is full of servers that is just generating tokens for people to use at inference time. And inference time means when you're actually querying the model to get data back out. So they're just providing capability to all of the model providers so that you can then actually use it the way you need to. While it's clear that having a robust infrastructure is critical to powering the next wave of AI breakthroughs, 
Historical parallels and even warning signals noted by industry leaders suggest that there might be bubble risks if overinvestment isn't coupled with realistic expectations. And they're saying this because there's a lot of circular investment. NVIDIA is investing in Claude and OpenAI. Then OpenAI and Claude then buy servers from NVIDIA using the money that they gave them. Like the money just goes round and round. Again, a lot of people are skeptical. There's a lot of other people saying this is different to previous bubbles that have happened and speculatory things such as the train rollout. And that's an interesting lead, a couple of podcasts I've heard about that over the years, about how the train lines were invested in and deployed across the United States and England. And there was train lines going nowhere and people were just putting money in. I think Cautionary Tales did a really good one on that. I've probably done a couple of them. One to, I think in San Francisco and then the, one in England. But there is like a lot of those train lines were wasted and never used again. They were done at different gauges and were connected to each other. This infrastructure will not be left alone. Companies will end up using it and those data centers will go to use. It's a bit different, I believe. Speaking of infrastructure, I watched an in-depth look into the data centers, the hidden backbone of these, evolution of these massive hubs, especially in terms of energy and cooling. It's all about cooling. They generate a shitload of heat. They need to be cooled down fast because computers only work really well once they're cool, not hot. So it's really interesting to see how they manage that along with trying to get the most output per volume of area and cost and managing the heat across the entire factory. AI's impact on jobs, context, and society. On the societal front, there were some intriguing insights into which jobs people are actually comfortable automating. One video broke down a quadrant chart showing that while many see value in automating white collar tasks, there remains a strong moral boundary against replacing roles in caregiving or teaching. People don't want to replace the human personable jobs, but those industries with the people that work in them say that those are the ones where they need the most assistance. So then they can spend more time with the people and then the AI automation and robots can then do the boring work. And just in general, if you think about it, if AI takes everyone's job and people don't have jobs to do and it can't do the other things, like cleaning up and cleaning up at home, where you actually want the AI to help you, we're not in a better position at all. So this is keep the people and the interaction there available, but have AI and agents and robots assist in all the other tasks to allow the person to spend more time on the tasks that matter in their work, such as caring for people. Then there was a conversation with Klan, the CEO, where AI transformative effect on banking was front and center. From digital financial systems that analyze spending habits to AI streamlining customer success, it's clear that industries are poised for dramatic shifts. One of the key things he sort of mentioned about is banks and lenders don't have a real big incentive to reduce like interest rates because it's difficult to change and move. But if you start bringing in a AI assistant in the banking space that can talk to all these banks and do everything, then automatically the AI is going to pick the best rate and then it's going to be forced to drop the rates that they're offered by all of these lenders and banks. People don't care who they bank with. They just want the best deal. So if you can get an agent to do that, then that's going to change that equation in that industry and reduce the rate for everyone. Because when the agent is doing it, it's not going to be a huge effort or a big pain in the ass to change as a person. So this is going to start changing some of the equations, but you're going to get blockers in those areas because all these incumbent companies have to protect their interests, their shareholders, et cetera, et cetera. So having that shift come in is going to change markets and economies more drastically than just the general AI will, I think. So reflecting on this week's content, AI space is in a state of thrilling evolution. We're seeing enterprise grade systems that promise to redefine workflows, innovate developer tools that empower rapid creation and infrastructure investments that underline the scale of our ambitions. Even as experts warn us about potential pitfalls, ultimately the balance between harnessing AI's capabilities and managing societal impacts will set the stage for the next wave of technological transform. Thanks for tuning in to this week's roundup. I think I covered 16 different podcasts and videos that I did this week, which was almost over nine hours, I think. Big week this week. I did a bit of gardening and stuff, so <laughs> that was uh, keeping me going. I guess, as usual, there's a lot of stuff going on. Your best option is just to start playing with things, understand how they work, figure out what you can do with it, not just sit there and use ChatGPT to just write you an email. What else can you do? You look at their aging kit, look at their computer use, look at Codex, look at all these other tools that are available on the internet. Just start playing and seeing how you can do anything. If you need a hand, reach out to us. We're always available and we love helping businesses get ahead and succeed with AI. And it's something that we really want to get involved with. As usual, let me know if there's any way we can assist or I can make this a bit more engaging or improve these videos. If not, good luck keeping up with the AI news.